Coming up today on YOLO Texas. I did notice that you are wearing a chair pendant. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> Watch out for this. This could be dangerous. I feel like I'm drinking Butterfingers. This is so delicious. Everybody loves when we turn this light switch on. Yes. Join us on our trip across Texas. Today, we are here in the heart of the Hill Country in Kerrville, home to the iconic James Avery Artisan Jewelry. Now, we've been here before during the holidays, but today we're gonna take a deeper dive into this family-owned company where everything is made here in Texas. All right, Lindsay, thank you for having us out here again. I'm very excited for our trip out here today. But first, let's talk about where we're standing. We're in the visitor center and retail store. Yes, so this store is here in Kerrville. It's on our main headquarters. Five years ago, we added a really neat visitor center that showcases all the things we do from design and manufacturing right here in the Hill Country. And then it also talks a lot about my granddad's legacy. So people that love the brand want to know that and they want to see it firsthand. So we do that here in our visitor center. We start here with how the process begins, right? An, an idea, inspiration from our designers, and we take all our customers through how the process of design works. So once we have an inspiration, we sketch. These beautiful artists wow. <laughs> do such an amazing job, so we this talk about so that. Have you sketched anything before? Oh gosh, I tried to sketch a Texas here, sitting oh. at this bench, and I'm like, okay, that's art, the artistic part might not be my, <laughs> my forte. <laughs> And then we go into how, from a design, we create models and molds, and that preps us to be able to do all the manufacturing in-house as well. Very cool. Then in manufacturing, you know, what's really neat is some of these processes we've been doing from the beginning, 60 years, like hand hammering, wow. um, sh hand sh shaping and forging. I hope you'll be able to get to oh try some gosh. of these today. And I think customers love that part of it. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely, I know I love it. <laughs> So then you get into a little bit more about my granddad's life and his legacy. Right. Um, really focused in this area about his early life um, before he got into jewelry making. Some students came in and actually asked, you know, I want a cross. Is there something you can make? Can we make jewelry? And he said, sure, I can learn that. <laughs> so he got a book from the library and taught himself how Isn't to make perfect? jewelry. And then right that from there. That is so perfect. And that design is still in the line today, which was pretty cool. Yeah. The very first cross that he made. Oh my so. gosh, can you show it to us? Yeah, so, okay, I'd love yeah. to show you. Oh, look. Oh, is this it? There it is. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. And it's a great design, it right? All it's timeless. Yeah. yeah. It's so classic. James Avery is not just a brand. It's, it's got a meaning. It's about meaning, connection, family, and community. Can you talk a little bit about the ideals that the brand was built on? Absolutely. So that's a huge part of my granddad's legacy. And really when he started, it was, was faith-based and it was about connection and creating designs that related to people's lives and the events in their lives and what was important to them, um, their family, their friends, their faith. And we've really, really focused on staying true to that. And you'll see that same love and passion for creating meaning uh, through the designs that they do and the, the jewelry that they craft. So in this building, this is actually where ideas are formed and sketches are drawn and everything kind of um, comes to life here. Yes, so there were four words that were really meaningful to Mr. Avery and he wanted to make sure that the design team really kept them in mind as we were working. And as you can see, um, they're front and center kind of in this room for us to not forget about them. I actually have my charm bracelet that I got for my quinceanera. I turned 15 and my parents and I have been filling it up with life events. So here, I don't know if you've designed any of these, but there it is. <laughs> this is great. A couple of these actually look a lot like things that Clay did. Okay. So why don't we ask Clay if, All he, right. if he did that? Well, hello, Clay. Hi. So which charms did you design? Oh, these are great. I made the laptop charm 
and also did the Celebrate charm. Y'all have several designers on staff. Do each of y'all have a specialty? We all do everything, a little bit of everything, but we do have kind of our sweet spot. So he hand built that laptop when they did the first he one. There's that. no computer either or anything. Really? Like that. Pretty neat. Now, I didn't make any of the charms on your bracelet, but I did notice that you are wearing one of my designs. That's my cherished pendant that you'd, you're wearing. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Never did I think that I would be standing in the James Avery Design Studio meeting the designers who design charms for my charm bracelet and jewelry that I wear and that my family wears. This is, this is wild for me. <laughs> We were just at the Design Center and now we're here at one of the many James Avery Craftsman Centers where we're going to see those ideas come to life. Okay, Ariel, so here we are at our Kerrville Craftsman Center where the majority of our jewelry is crafted. You said prepare to be amazed and you were right. This is amazing. It is amazing and it's beautiful. A lot of detail went into making this space feel homey. Yes. And not like a warehouse. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the natural skylight, you, make, you're, you feel at home here. We are here about to witness hand graving, correct? Correct. Can you explain the process and what, what it actually is? Yes, yeah, so hand engraving is a very uh, high level skill. We only have a few that can do it and what how they start the process is they will sketch out a pattern on the piece. Then they take what we call a graver and that's a like a little sharp knife that actually cuts the metal and lifts the metal up and engraves the piece. Those are nice earrings. They are beautiful. Did you make these? I make this. I'm gonna do one for you so you can. Okay. So that's the earring? Yes. Oh my god. Today we're gonna hammer it. Okay. We're gonna switch on this part. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. It's so crooked. And that's why we had to do, that's why they call it handmade. That's beautiful. Nice. You have experience, Perfect. you have experience, right? <laughs> Only 40 years. Only 40, yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try it. This side or this side? This side. That's it. Let me tell you something. Only right here. Okay, don't, don't, don't do, do the whole hand? Yeah. That's... That's okay, you can, do, you can do it if you want, the way you want, it's all right. Celebrating life through the beauty of design, that is James Avery. Any piece that you purchase not only has special meaning to you, but it has special meaning to those who created it. Coming up next, Jill mixes up some cocktails with an old friend. Hey everyone, so excited to be doing one of my favorite things today, mixing up some cocktails. And here to help me, Chris from Soleil. Hello. Chris, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So excited to try this new mango passion of yours. Tell us a little bit about this cocktail. Absolutely. So this is my own company. This is actually juicing with alcohol. Ooh. So what we do is we use real action fruit, in this case, mangoes. It's 100% pressed mangoes. And then for the fun, we add a little bit of alcohol <laughs> for the weekend. So this is juicing for the weekend. So I wanted to show you three quick recipes okay. you can yeah. do very easily at home. Ooh, let's do it. You ready? What's up first? Okay. We're going to do uh, for when it's sunny outside, it's hot, and you want to have like a hard seltzer type drink. That we're gonna mix this okay. with sparkling water. Roughly mm -hmm. how much sparkling? I would do half and half. Okay. Then we're gonna add the mango in there. If you want it more, you can do a little more. And add more of the mango. If you want it lighter, you add more of the sparkling water. By the pool, mango seltzer. Let's give it a try. <sighs> wow. Refreshing, you're absolutely right. Honestly, it, it, it tastes like mango juice. <laughs> I love this, this is great. The second thing we're gonna do is mango mimosas. Ooh. So you can actually upgrade your mimosa and use freshly pressed mango instead of the orange juice. Roughly half and half. Soleil mango mimosa, here we go. Oh, that's yummy. You can taste the, the freshness of the mango juice. That's what I love. Watch out for this, this could be dangerous. The third recipe we're gonna do today 
is actually my personal favorite. We're gonna make mango margaritas. Yes, I was hoping margaritas was in the plan for today. <laughs> and so what I'm gonna show you is that you can make this at home with large bottles, but for people to try at home, we actually have them in these cute little gift bags. So you have mini bottles of the mango passion, of course. Mm -hmm. Then we have a nice little tequila. Yes, love that. And the third bottle is simple syrup. Okay. And then we have a recipe card that goes with it. So that ah, people yes. know what they can do at home. <laughs> but we're gonna try it right now. The only thing you need to do is slice up a fresh lime at home. This might be the most difficult thing I'm, I'm doing today. There we and go. I, I like how easy everything else is. Okay. We'll take the Soleil mini bottle mm -hmm. and pour it in there. Then we're gonna add the tequila. Okay, tequila's next and all of it. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I said I love margaritas, so and then the third bottle is simple syrup, which basically okay. is sweetness to balance out the tartness of the real limes. Okay. So far, we are two for two on your Soleil beverages, Chris. So I'm thinking we go for a perfect three for three. Oh, wow. That was delicious, right? <laughs> wow. We ended on a home run right here. This is amazing. The tequila, I can taste it, but it's not overwhelming and the mango just ties everything together. Chris, thank you so much for sharing our uh, this delicious mango passion with us today. Thank you for having me. And I have a feeling that these will be made in uh, my household in the future. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> We've already done a little drinking, but now I'm excited to do my other favorite activity, shopping. And Sonia, you look like you have some wonderful gifts for us today. We most definitely do. My company's name is Sonia's Vocalized Creations, and we actually make custom luxury gift arrangements. And we're unique in the fact that we use a lot of local businesses as well as BIPOC businesses to keep our items super unique. So today we have um, a brand that's that I launched recently, which is for women on the move, Ooh, much like you. Yes, right? I, I'm definitely <laughs> all ears for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. These are some of the items that you are seeing right now. Something tells me that these are not just any ordinary exactly. clutch, right? Exactly. So we actually call them the Manhattan clutches. So what you have right now is the signature gale. I obviously am a fan of pink. Yeah. So that's where that color brewed out of. But I also wanted to give a, a batch of colors that you can't normally find. Like where can you go and find this color normally when you need a clutch, you know? The colors absolutely pop. Mm -hmm. And and I'm intrigued by the size. It looks like, correct me if I'm wrong, but absolutely. you can fit your entire iPad in here. Yep. This is essential for women mm -hmm. on the go. <laughs> it is, it's very essential for that. The main thing is that you're able to go from the boardroom to hang out with your girls or to go for date night and have that convenience instead of transitioning bags. These uh, metallic planners. Yes. These are adorable. And I already have a list of people in my head that could use these. Yes, so these are our journals that we came out with. I am a journaler, journaler and planner by uh, nature. So I design my own journals and they're slightly guided so that you have some assistance as you're going through and also keep you super motivated. These are so mm -hmm. cute. And I thank you. Your key word, you said motivated. That yes. we all could use a little motivation here or there. I'm um, now I'm eyeing these super cute what looks like lipsticks, but I'm not quite sure. What are what do you have here? Yes, I would be careful not to put them on, but yes, they are <laughs> lipsticks, but they also keep your phone charged or your iPad. No so way. We, yes. So. <laughs> okay, so it's it looks like a lipstick. Yes. But it's a phone charger? Mm-hmm. We what? have not solved every problem, so we did solve this one. <laughs> this is one more item that we created, and I found myself creating a lot of gift arrangements for bridesmaids. You know, when they're traveling, they always have this keepsake and it says a gift from the bride right here. So these are really great to include in those arrangements. And if you're looking for a gift for your girlfriend, for a woman on the go, just about anybody, SVK. Don't go anywhere, YOLO Texas is back right after this. I've made my way here to Georgetown, Texas, and I'm looking to satisfy a sweet tooth now. I've heard a thing or two about this place, so let's go see if it does the trick. All right, Sherry, thank you for having us out here today. I think I have just walked into heaven. I think I'm in love. <laughs> so can you tell us how many flavors do you have? How do you come up with the flavors? So we have 44 flavors. <laughs> yes, and a lot of our specialty shakes combine more than one flavor. They'll combine two flavors. So when you start doing the math, it gets a little out of hand on how many different combinations you can have. 
it's a good way to really exercise your creativity. So are you coming up with those shakes yourself? Sometimes. We oh. mostly come up with the ones on our secret menu. So oh yes, so, I saw you had a secret yes. menu. Yes, so each store has their own secret menu and we design those shakes. So we're going to try some milkshakes today. Okay. So can you tell me a little bit about the process of how you assemble it? We kind of run it like a line. So all of our specialties come in a souvenir jar, so customers get to keep it and take it home with them. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Um, once you pick your flavor, you, we start obviously by scooping the ice cream. So if you're going to drink it as a shake, we scoop it into a shake cup and we mix it up with milk. We've got decorators along the line that you'll see that decorate the jars. Then you put the shake in, then you have to top the jar. So you'll notice from looking at all the shakes that they're pretty big. Yes. <laughs> yes, so um, we have to decorate the jar, make the shake, put it all together, top it, and then we run it out, which is another reason I loved this concept because it's very experiential. Yes. It's not just come in, order something, and take it with you for the most part. Right. Um, people come in, they sit, they bring their family. They really enjoy the whole process. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you for having us out here. I am super excited. I'm excited to see how it all comes together. No, oh, thank you. We're glad to have you. All right, y'all, La Malicious, whimsical green and yellow cake batter, all of the things in it. It looks beautiful. I think that's the perfect starting point. What's going on, Jake? Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing well. So I just discovered y'all have a La Malicious ice cream. Uh -huh. And I totally need to try that. So can you make it as beautiful as possible yes. with the mermaid tail? All right, yeah, I can do that. How do I eat this? I'm just gonna go for it. Here we go. I think I'm like five years old again. This is delicious. All right, my producer just informed me that I need to um, slow down because they made a YOLO milkshake for us and um, I'm going to need to eat that as well. So, Put this down. Don't worry. Probably gonna take it home with me. I'm so glad. I feel like I'm drinking Butterfingers. This is so delicious. And if you're in the Georgetown area or in the Austin area, the YOLO milkshake is on their secret menu, so you know you gotta check it out. All right, y'all, make the yard a destination because their milkshakes are truly legendary. See what I did there? Milkshakes, legendary. Coming up next, we head to Burn It to experience a true Texas treasure. So there are five major caverns here in the state of Texas, and we've actually experienced a few of them. But today, we're here at Longhorn Cavern, and we're going to see what makes it so unique. The park was actually established in 1932 by the state. And then in 1934, uh, when the Civilian Conservation Corps was created, we got a crew of guys out here, Company 854 and they spent the next five or six years uh, excavating over 3,000 dump trucks worth of debris out of this cavern. They built all of our beautiful historic structures that you see all around the park. They laid out the first trails and pathways. Uh, and they even built Park Road 4 from the park all the way back out to Highway 281. And they really made the park what it is today. Very, very cool. So I heard there was a diamond room down there. Is that true? <laughs> well, it's called the Hall of Diamonds. Okay. Uh, the CCC called it that. Um, they're actually calcite crystals. So we have two actually large rooms of calcite crystals. One is Crystal City and one is the Hall of Diamonds. This is such a cool place. Yeah. So we've talked about the cave, but what about up here? So we're a beautiful park. We have about a mile and a quarter worth of hiking trails. They're very kid friendly. One of them is a nature trail that's got different plant and animal markers on it. The other one in the park takes you through some of what we call karst features. Karst is essentially what a kid 
cave looks like above ground. So you can actually see places where the water is beginning to dissolve out the limestone. It's a great place to come and spend an afternoon. We welcome everybody out to have a good time and spend the day. I'm excited to be here. Great. Where should we begin? We will begin right down here in our entrance sinkhole and I'll tell you a little bit about how the cave was formed. Well, and then where are we? So we've come down about 30 feet from ground level into the main entrance sinkhole for the cavern. Okay. We were largely formed by an underground river. So we look a lot different than other caverns. Right. Uh, we don't have as many large formations. And what you're really looking for today is the unique appearance that that river carved through the hillside as it was pushing through a process called abrasion. So that makes Longhorn Caverns geology very, very unique. So this is the Queen's throne room, and we call it that because <laughs> of this, this large uh, flowstone formation here. And if you look right actually over here. Is that a puppy? <laughs> <laughs> so this is called the Queen's watchdog. It's actually a natural formation. The CCC were excavating back there and they found the watchdog. And they decided it would be fun to bring it up here and it now looks after the Queen's, the Queen's throne. throne. Hall of Marble. Hall of Marble. This is one of our ooh ah yeah. caverns. <laughs> Everybody loves when we turn this light switch on. Yes. Uh, what you're looking at here is the result of very high, very fast flowing water coming through, uh, whirlpooling against the top, mm -hmm. scooping uh, what we call scallops out of the sides of the walls. the Hall of Diamonds. It's our largest calcite crystal chamber. But calcite crystal really has got some very interesting properties, one of which is its ability to really ref refract uh, light. So one of the interesting things that we like to show guests is if we put our lights up on the crystals, you can see how it is absorbed and refracted through that crystal. So it's a pretty interesting uh, geologic phenomenon. It's, it's, we're very proud to have it. I mean, this is what I was waiting for and I'm not disappointed. <laughs> Longhorn Cavern is so incredibly unique, something that I've never experienced before. Overall, it's just a really good time and it rocks.